Welcome everybody. So in this lesson, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up your Copilot. So once you open your VS Code, which of course is just a blank canvas at this point, I do not have any folder open or any files being displayed because I removed everything and I just wanted to demonstrate from scratch. So once you open the VS Code, and you'll notice there'll be something like Setup Copilot. And this is, once again, just a welcome screen. Get started with VS Code. So what we need to do is just simply set up Copilot, and it asks you to sign in to use Copilot, and you have to sign with GitHub. So let's continue with GitHub. And what this is going to do is just open up your browser, and we'll ask you which account do you want to sign up. Now, typically, you just have one account, or if you have multiple accounts, then this is what you'll see, or you can use a different account. So I'm going to go ahead and, since I'm signed in as Codeflow Ops, I'm just going to go ahead and click Continue. And what this will do is redirect me back, and I can open Visual Studio Code. And now I will be signed in with the Copilot. And notice the difference here now is that you'll have a chat open, and at the bottom here you'll see the actual Copilot where you can actually start prompting. So let me go ahead and expand this a little bit so you can see better. Now this has many things. So it has agent, and you can ask or you can edit. So right now, I'm in the agent mode. If I go simply click on ask, it's just going to go ahead and give me answers, just like ChatGPT does, for example, or Claude would do. And I can use agents both. I can use ChatGPT, and I can use Claude as well. So. Let's go ahead and on the left side, before I actually, I'll come back to this. On the left side, where your profile is, account signed in, I need to go ahead and navigate to Codeflow GitHub. And I can either do manage trusted extensions, which it typically prompts me. And if it does prompt you, just say yes. And I'm going to go ahead and also sign in with GitHub to use GitHub pull requests. Now, what needs to happen is, of course, we need to take our VS Code and then uh, hook it up with our GitHub repository where our code exists so that we can do git pull and push code as we develop. So let's just sign in for now. And it's just the same process. Just click continue. And I'm going to go back to opening up the Visual Studio code. Perfect. So now that we're signed in, I'm going to go ahead and say hello, just in chat, just to see what's going on. Because right now, I just see the agent. I don't see Claude and GPT. So as soon as I type hello, boom, I'm going to see the default, which is ChatGPT 4.1. Well, if I'm not interested in using the ChatGPT agent, I can pick Claude 3.5, 3.7, or version 4, which is the latest one. Now they have, I think, Opus 2. But right now, we're just going to be using Claude Sonnet 4. Now, what this agent is very powerful. This is not only just your AI programmer. But you can actually tell it to do whatever it is that you want to do. So if you want to create a simple website, simple blog page, or whatever it is that you want to do, maybe even complex programming. And then, of course, as you move along, I'm going to demonstrate how this actually works. So right now, this is all I wanted to show you. And of course, the details, like if you want to open the terminal, you can click on Terminal, New Terminal, and you can run the commands right from the terminal as well. Whether you're using PowerShell, for example, or if you want to use your bash, or for example, command prompt or Ubuntu, you can pick any one of these. Okay, typically, it's bash, but by default, it's PowerShell because hey, it's VS Code and it's Microsoft, so not a problem at all. The agent understands all different formats, so no matter which which you use, whether it's PowerShell or Git Bash, the agent will know which command to use if you need to exercise it. All right, so this is just the brief. And on the left side, you'll see the source control, which is where you're actually cloning your repository and you're connecting to GitHub. So just a brief overview of the VS Code and how to set up your AI programmer. All right, let me go ahead and move forward. Let's do open folder, because now let's go ahead and, and take a look at what we have currently. So I'm just going to navigate to the folder. I'm going to find, there we go. So we're using Codeflow Ops dash SAS. This is our product that we've been developing. So I'm going to go ahead and select this folder, simply click on Select. And what this is going to do is actually open up all the files. And boom, there you go. I did mention earlier that you trust the authors of the files and the, uh, and the folder. I'm going to just go ahead and say yes. And now we have our code. So this is the code that we've been actually developing. And we can use the agent 
to ask anything. If you want to know more about the code itself, what the back end does, for example, or what the front end does, or in general, you want to be able to know what exactly all this code is all about, I can simply navigate to the agent. And typically I use Claude. We'll be using Claude here. And I can just say, can you check up my backend folder? So just a simple prompt. Can you check up my backup folder and tell me about my project? So if I hit the send button here, Claude is going to go ahead and in fact start to analyze the backend folder only because that's what I specified. And what it'll do is you'll say, I'll examine your backend folder to understand your project structure and tell you about it. So let me start by exploring the backend directory in detail. Now what this is doing is simply reading up all the files all the uh, necessary files rather, or the important files, that it needs to understand the structure of the project itself. And then once it's done reading up, it will then give you the comprehensive analysis, the summary, the details of what it thinks this project is all about. So let's see what this comes up with and we'll see how uh, good it is at uh, actually understanding the code, reading up on the code itself, and then understanding the structure. And notice it's going through package JSON, requirements TXT, core APIs, simple APIs, because we're using this model. And then the DB router is registry, and then the services. So it's just, just going through it. It's just going through the orchestrator.py, all these files that we have in the backup folder right here. That's what it's doing. It's analyzing the important ones that it thinks is or has the required files that are necessary to read. And then, of course, give you the details. So there we go. So it just took about 30 seconds or so, or a minute or so, and now it's giving us the project overview. Let me expand this a little bit more so you can see. Now, what it's done is a beautiful job. It says CodeFlow Ops SaaS is an automated GitHub to AWS deployment platform that intelligently analyzes repositories and deploys them to AWS infrastructure. Boom, right there is it actually, in fact, what we do. And this is a sophisticated SaaS solution with both backend and frontend components even though I did ask for backend, but hey, it just gives me the project overview. Now it gives me the stack also, the primary stack it detects. We're using fast API Python with ExpressJS or Node.js hybrid. And then we're using SQLite and SQL Alchemy with Alembic migrations. The cloud we're using is AWS SD CloudFront, Boto3 and authentication and so on. So it goes through the backend architecture, gives me the dependencies. And then here's the breakdown of the actual core components. So notice these are all the folders and what the folders entail, of course, all the files, and it gives us detailed core components. Then it comes down to core functionality. So it says, hey, we are intelligent stack detection because in this particular SaaS product, the user simply enter a GitHub URL for the repo or any repo, as it has to be a public repo. And then this system is going to intelligently analyze and then detect the stack as to what is the best stack to deploy. For example, the front end is using React, Next.js, Angular, Review, and then the back end, of course, has its own, and then the static side, mobile, and documentation. So these are the capabilities of this SaaS. And then it's a multi-tenant architecture because you'll have thousands of users. We can have thousands of users actually using this SaaS platform. And then, of course, it touches on the cost management, notification system, the current state of the project, which is excellent. And then the development areas, and then the notable achievements, and then the business model. So not bad, but gives you a, a comprehensive overview of what this is. So if you were a new person, or uh, I don't know the code at all, I don't know anything about the back end, front end, and I'm just opening up a bunch of files, well, the cloud agent is going to give me a heads up on what this is all about. And now I can actually start using it and I can just prompt Claude to start doing coding for me, right? And that's something that we'll do in the next lecture. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions with this. Let's move to the next lesson.